very hearty welcome to all of you back again last saturday was 31st of december and the topic was the last lecture but it is obvious now that that was not my last lecture because i'm back here in 2023 wishing you all once again a very very happy promising and fulfilling new year and that's the reason why i took up this uh, topic but i want to clarify though i said you know the topic is what to expect in 2023 i want to focus more on how you can carve out 2023 what 2023 is likely to offer you in general is what i'll be talking about first i'm also a part time astrologer you know so i like to sharpen these skills of mine by doing a little bit of exploration not over the planets and all that but about the world around me and i do my sharing of course it's up to you to take it or leave it to give significance to it or not so of course even today in the year 2023 nothing is complete without the mention of the great covid because in 2020 march we had our first covid and we had this huge lockdown we were all taken by surprise absolutely you know shocked and uncertain as to what is going to happen even when the curfew was lifted we were very hesitant we were slowly coming back to opening out going out meeting people taking up activities when the second phase hit and as you know the second phase somehow turned out to be more fatal than the first phase we had many more deaths unfortunately so many families lost at least a dear uh, one so when that happened people were shaken up even more so when the second phase the lockdown was lifted i found generally people were much much more hesitant they say you know once bitten twice shy here we were twice bitten so obviously we were three times shy and then a very interesting third phase turned up thankfully third phase did not involve a lockdown there were just restrictions put in and more than that thankfully the third phase did not see much in terms of deaths after that we started limping back to normalcy in 2022 schools reopened entertainment places and all that reopened people started traveling they even took up what they call as vengeance traveling two years you locked me up in my house <clears throat> now i'm going to go out and enjoy myself i'm going to visit places etc so all that was happening so we were expecting that by the time 2022 was getting over we were expecting that 2023 will bring a lot of relief openness freedom back to so called normalcy but what happened by the time 2022 ended they started talking about a fourth phase already i am meeting a lot of friends who are saying that i don't want to take chances i don't want to plan ahead i don't know if this fourth phase comes in <clears throat> i would like to take all possible precautions the masks are back as you have seen in between one by one one by one mask restrictions had been removed but slowly in some places like schools in bangalore have asked children to start wearing masks various other places you know where mask had been removed they have started talking again about the mask now as i said since i am a part time astrologer let me tell you that i personally i may be wrong but i personally do not think that this so called fourth phase is going to be very problematic yes it will definitely affect some of us if and when it comes but that affects us anyway there are people who uh, die or get suffer due to accidents there are pe people who suffer because innumerable illnesses 
some of which are very, very much more morbid than COVID. Some people lose their loved ones to some ailments from where they never recover. So like that, I personally feel that we should take it in that stride. Even if it comes and even if there are some restrictions imposed in our you know, good faith by the authorities, we should follow all the rules and we should accept what has been told. But I don't think it is fair that we should lock ourselves and our brains. We only need to lock our doors if this phase comes in. So that is something that I would like to request to all of you. Just because we had these phases, including the second phase, as I said, where things were very bad and so many people succumbed to death and so many people suffered because of the COVID, it does not mean that it's going to go on forever and ever. And it depends on our attitude. How do we you know, take it uh, uh, in? Because I am watching that people have become asocial. Some people have even become antisocial. Where they used to freely move around, mix up, invite people to their house or go and visit people, have parties. I'm seeing a lot of people today are not doing that. They are slowly withdrawing. Outside their immediate circle, they do not want to meet other people. They don't want to go to anybody's house. They don't want to encourage anybody to come to their uh, house. I think that's not a good thing that we are doing. Because if you just recall these one, two, three phases of COVID, people who took all possible precautions also got COVID. And people who went about their work and their meeting people and moving around as per the government regulations, they did not get COVID. That is the funny part of it, that it is not predictable. But we should not die a hundred times before our death just because of this funny COVID thing which has come into our lives. It has already affected our lives to a great extent. This year, 2023, I request all of you, let COVID not rule our lives. The same way I talk about things like, for example, anxiety. Anxiety is worrying about something even before it happens. What if it happens? Now, the same thing has come here. If you allow anxiety to rule your life, you will never be happy even if COVID has been wiped out from the face of the earth. You will invent something else to justify why you are being so, you know, taking so many precautions and why you are being so cautious. That's no way to run life. Man is a social animal. We thrive on social contact. We interact with each other. We support each other. We are there for each other. So many things that we can do. We are depriving ourselves if we start taking this thing so um, uh, seriously. The other thing is that I have been telling you since a very long time that loneliness is an epidemic or a pandemic which is very badly hitting mankind. And COVID has made sure that loneliness has been given an official rubber stamp. Because people now have a justification not to interact with others, not to be in contact with uh, others. People are hiding behind screens even when they need to talk, even when they need to converse, if they need to work. They're all hiding behind screens. Innumerable organizations that I know from the IT sector down to many other sectors where colleagues working in the same team haven't met each other for months and years. That is what is troubling me, because I think that that is very, very artificial. When the second phase of COVID came, people you know, invented a new word. This is the new normal, they said. I protested. I said, no. This is the new abnormal. And the faster we get back to the old normal, the better it is going to be. You may call me an old timer, you may say I'm outdated and I'm not moving with times and people are, you know, far ahead, technology, this, that. No, I don't think that is true. I think 
that we need to be a little more rational in this. Otherwise, loneliness is going to be a very great issue that you are going to face in 2023. You will find that you have lost contact with people. You will find that you have <clears throat> lost the ability to be in touch with people and to enjoy their uh, uh, company. And when that happens, when that isolation comes in, when that loneliness comes in, it is going to be extremely bad for many, many, many of uh, uh, us. So to start off with 2023, as I said, I told you what to expect, but I said I will tell you not how life is treating you, but how are you treating life? So can we make a resolution in the first week of this year that we will start reaching out to more and more people in the best possible manner? I'm not saying that you should go into crowds and unknown people and take risks and all that. No, I'm talking on a one-to-one -one basis. If you have a friend whom you haven't met since a long time, there's no point in just doing a video call with that uh, uh, person. Go across to that person, sit with that person, hold his hand, express that I still care for you and I love you, even though we have not been able to meet since a long time because of whatever has been uh, happening. If we start renewing that, I assure you, life is going to be, you know, very, very positive. Now, as you know, we live in a democracy, which is perhaps the world's biggest democracy. Innumerable nations, so-called progressive nations who are doing very well in terms of wealth, do not have that freedom do not have that abilities and the, you know, uh, the independence to be able to lead your own life. We are wanting to be, to take full advantage of the fact that we live in a free democracy. The only way to do that is to express yourself, come out, talk to people, take other people's views also into account. Don't close yourself to only what you are thinking. Be open to taking opinions from uh, others and start moving with the times. Last year, we got the national education policy and Karnataka was the first state to start implementing it. A lot of changes are coming in the education sector. If you are concerned about the younger generation, whether you have your own children, whether you are in the teaching profession, whether you are counseling youngsters, whatever it may be. But if you are genuinely concerned about the younger generation, please pay attention to the national education policy, which has already come into effect. Three year courses have become four year courses. MPhil is on its way out. Even postgraduate studies are going to be on their way out. The PUC has been merged with the school levels. So children will now be going through schooling like how they do in CBSC and ICC schools. They will be included in the school environment. And then they will come into a four-year degree uh, course. They already come into four-year degree course. Please take interest in finding out what it is all about. Because definitely there is teaching trouble. Anything revolutionary, anything new, anything which is brought about, you know, different from what was used to in for years and decades, will always have a rough ride. There will be ups and downs, there will be differences. But how do we overcome all of us as citizens of this country? I think we need to take interest in this one factor that is the new education uh, systems and policies and methodologies and all these uh, uh, things. Same thing uh, goes about careers. In the last couple of months, you may have heard that uh, a lot of people in good reputed companies were given the pink slip. People who are very confident that I, can, I am in a very good career, very good job, very stable, earning well. Some of them got a very big shock when they were asked to leave. 
and most of them i deal with people you know who are not very very young who are more towards their middle age many such people i found were shaken up very much you know the reason for that you have to anticipate change the days are gone when you can adapt to change when it comes you have to anticipate change if you are working in a very good <clears throat> and a very stable job anticipate what will happen if i lose my job if i have to change over my methodology if my work culture becomes different from what it is now so when you anticipate change you can do much better this applies to relationships this applies to you know living styles this applies to just about anything that you can uh, think of but in the beginning of this year i would like you to start anticipating change the other thing that i want to tell you is that the best time to bring about a change or to carve out a new direction is when there is no need when the pandemic came it forced us to do things which we were not used to be doing now with the pandemic gone and apparently some sort of openness having set in now you plan your life ahead bring about whatever changes are necessary in your lifestyle in your professional life in your relationships in the way you handle your emotions at this juncture then covid is not you know a very big problem as it used to be in the last 2 years when things are comparatively much more softer and normal this is the time to think ahead and to plan ahead as to what you are going to be uh, doing just to give you an example when it boom took over you know about 20 years back people started talking about brick companies versus click companies brick companies were like the word suggests brick and mortar that means you have infrastructure you have huge buildings you have factories in those factories there are machines working there are huge number of labor who come in work in the factory and go back home that is called brick fact uh, you know businesses brick companies in the last 20 years the increase has been maximum in click companies it comes from that click of the mouse you you keep using the mouse you keep moving the mouse and every time you just click the mouse isn't it so click companies do not require buildings infrastructure huge labor machinery nothing of that sort you can sit at home be alone and set up you know a wonderful uh, uh, startup and make millions and billions the question that i have been posing to my friends and i'm sharing with you today also is that are all click companies producing wealth or are they only accumulating wealth anything which only accumulates wealth does not have a long future so when we talk about planning further ahead start thinking about the fact that manufacturing industry has come down to half of what it was a few years back throughout history from the time the industrial era came in manufacturing industries used to continuously increase year by year now they are decreasing so who is going to provide the infrastructure the products and the services which we uh, require certain things which are really worthy of thinking same thing as i told you how relationships are uh, changing we used to talk about you know uh, school children getting bullied at school by seniors and by some bullies in their own class today bullying has become a common factor in offices 
every boss every person in authority takes vicarious pleasure in not just telling his subordinate what to do but bullying the people into what you are doing where are we headed with that do you want to be part of that thing do you want to so that small seed which brings about at least a small change in your immediate uh, you know vicinity there is so much uh, you know focus on sports politics media none of these three are constructive to our future they don't create wealth they don't improve our quality of life and yet if you see it is the media it is the politics and it is the sports that are dominating my request to you is to start looking beyond these three is your interest beyond these three and many 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 of us are losing the habit of reading another resolution that i would very humbly request all of you is to make a promise to yourself that i will read more i will increase my reading there is no replacement for reading no videos no movies no memes can replace the text and written uh, word keep that in mind maybe some day you'll remember me uh, for uh, it overall i must say the economy is improving and there is no reason to presume that it will not continue to do well in 2023 it is just which sectors are doing well and which sectors are not doing well which if you're not an economist or if you're not in the business world it really doesn't matter but economy is certainly increasing at a very significant pace take advantage of it don't get carried away like many people are doing if they are earning 10 lakhs of rupees they are committing themselves to 6 lakhs 8 lakhs of emis for any reason if they lose their job and they are think where they are they going to get such huge amounts to pay month after month so if you are earning 10 lakhs rather start saving up for the day when you may not have that income coming how will you manage that i have always been talking about the fact that we should keep away from the rat race we are very lucky that 2023 despite what's happening in russia and ukraine seems to be a peaceful year compared to many many years earlier many decades and many centuries earlier we live a more peaceful and a more secure life than human beings have ever lived earlier read that book called sapiens you'll understand what i am you know talking uh, about similarly as i mentioned to you with the advent of technology with so many things happening you know in terms of the development of technology we have artificial intelligence we have robotics we have machine learning we have data sciences we have internet of uh, things all these things are galloping rushing at such a fast pace that again i think it is going to be a herd mentality protect yourself from that i'm not saying keep away from uh, uh, no technology in fact you cannot keep away from technology but let technology not become your master ensure that in 2023 technology will be your slave you will use it for whatever the good purpose and at the same time do not allow your mental health to go down despite all the buzz and the media attention and all that i still feel mental health is not given as much significance as we should at least you as concerned people as people who are more into human behavior understanding reaching out to people being compassionate caring you make the beginning by helping people to improve preserve your their mental health how do we do that the simplest thing is to create what we call as a work life balance 
if you can start off now as a new year assignment to look at your life holistically i have been able to identify about six or seven areas which make a holistic life for us i have been using this checklist since quite a long time but i asked anish to make it into a slide to share with you so that we can have a look at this work life balance and what are the parameters and what we need to work uh, on it it goes like this the first uh, one in this is health okay i have divided health into physical condition your weight shape looks how are you in uh, that your heart your blood pressure your diabetes and whatever are the other general health factors how good they are your energy levels through the day your sexual gratification and peace with uh, you know harmony with uh, matters to do with sexuality your food habits nutrition your resistance to addictions these are the parameters that determine your health that is one factor the next uh, factor that we need to look at in is financial what are my earnings versus my current needs very few of us do that if i am already earning more than what my current needs are i need not increase my needs and wants but start saving my savings in all forms sometimes you may have saving for example you may have a palatial bungalow but it may not be so easily saleable you may not be able to liquidate it at time of need so what are your savings in all forms what is the future financial security whether you have insurance whether you have property whether you have whatever you know shares in companies or gold or whatever it is then very important comfort of not having any debts or loans this is something which i've been trying to tell people please don't get into that emi culture where you start keep on buying things and increase your monthly outflow and what is the progress in earning and stability of your earnings these parameters will give you an idea about where you stand on the financial front the next is relationships i've been constantly emphasizing on it what is your comfort level with your closest friends what is your comfort level with seniors colleagues you know the second line of people comfort level with friends in general beyond your immediate circle your ability to manage long term relationships do you keep changing friends every now and then do you keep changing relationships and also the solace the joy of not having too many unpleasant or hostile relationships that is the parameters which determine how good you are at the relationship level then comes career and when i say career i'm also including those people who do not go to office and work who have made a career out of being a homemaker even those people need to review periodically so my present level of education knowledge and skills satisfaction with my position status and growth either in an organization or even in the family as a homemaker acquisition of new skills and growth what are my efforts towards it we constantly need to grow and my perception and adaptability adaptability to change like i told you do i have the ability to anticipate change and my openness about unlearning correcting myself giving a new direction that was the third uh, you know aspect of your uh, life the next is purpose what is your purpose in life ability to accept change meaning of your existence contribution to society and people harmony with environment and surroundings and spiritual inclination striving for spiritual growth recreation leisure games sports are equally important but we need to balance enjoying movies tv reading 
time with nature please underline that vacations short vacations long vacations creative hobbies recreation and leisure is also equally important than everything else so if you would like to mull over that i take my one minute break and i request sonal to come in and make a couple of very interesting announcements and then i'll be back As Ali was explaining about change and the work-life balance, as I was listening, when he spoke about purpose, I went a little deeper in my thought. We generally speak about our health, we speak about our finances, relationships also we generally speak, career also we try and look out. Purpose is something we look at it only after certain age or, you know, when you think that, what am I doing when everything is going good? What is my purpose of life? But I think that is something if we can teach children right from the beginning. Ki what is whatever action a child is doing? What is the purpose of it? I think we help children to internalize over the period of time. I think that's my takeaway from what Ali spoke just now. Right? Um, and to understand each one's purpose or make your life meaningful. Our diploma in counseling skills is a wonderful one year part time course, as many of you already who have done DCS knows it. And to tell you the admissions have opened for DCS 24, whomever you think can benefit from our diploma in counseling scores please tell them to get in touch because the process is quite a bit. It will be nice that they get in touch with us right now. We take them along. We take them along the process, not only about admission, but the pre-process uh, before the classes starts. There is one questionnaire, then meeting all of us, getting into the groove of the way Banjara works. I think it will be good if you and start spreading that word. And please spread the word that Banjara Academy offers free counseling to anyone who wishes to bring out the change in their life. Yeah, and wish you all the very best and happy new year. Now I want to see the other astrologers, what their predictions are, what their comments are, and we will pool everything. So we start with our dear friend Sri Devi, who says, I remember that quote which says, a man who becomes a slave of education will become a master of it. Yes, so many proverbs which are thought provoking, but we need to modify, we need to think of it from our own context, right? Every one of us is individual, every one of us is different, every one of us has got, you know, varying challenges from time to time. So what you become a master of and what you become a slave of is something that you need to think. Yes, Sri Devi says, turn my life around from a frog to an angel, princess, kind of fairy tale. Wonderful. And that is what I'm looking for. And I want this angel or this princess to grow. Not be complacent that, yes, once upon a time I was a frog and now I become a, a, a princess. That will be very, very hazardous for any one of us. If we become complacent, 
the rate at which change is taking uh, uh, place is unbelievable. And unless and until we are conscious of it and take it in your stride, make it an adventure and then and then only you will be able to actually move forward and continue to grow, continue to prosper. Hmm. Sri Devi also says DCS always the best. Happy New Year. Banjara the best always. Thank you very much. And that is a great compliment to us. And these are the type of words which spontaneously when they come in, we feel very, very happy about it. Navina says, I think how anything affects us, including COVID, is how much importance we give to it. As energy flows where thought goes. This is a very significant point, all of you. Please note, energy flows where thoughts go, says Navina. And I agree with her. So it's up to us what we energize. The more we keep thinking about something, the more we keep worrying about something, the more we develop this horrible thing called anxiety. I keep telling all my friends that anxiety is interest that we pay on a loan which we have not taken. Imagine you take a loan, you have to pay interest. But here you are paying interest on a loan which you have not taken. Worry is interest that you pay on a loan that you have taken. Because this has gone bad. This is not working out. This is where I'm facing challenges. That's why I'm worried. But anxiety is about something that may possibly happen. And I've started worrying about it right now. That means I've started paying interest on it right now, isn't it? So these are the things which, I, you know, they may sound oversimplistic and they may say, yeah, I know it. What's so great about it, etc. But the fact remains, do you implement it? Do you put it into practice? Unless and until you do that, just knowing all this gyan at the cognitive level does not happen. That is what all great thinkers have always told us. Unless and until we put things into practice. When we put these thoughts, as Navina says, it becomes energy in that direction. And automatically we start working towards it. Ha, ah, Rajeshwari says, if not for Banjara and DCS course, I would not have been able to manage until now handling bedridden patients since eight years. What more can be worse than having your own parents whom you love and whom you care for and whom you want the best to see that they have come to a state. There was a time when they gave birth to you, they brought you up, they took care of all your needs. And today, if they are in a situation where they have become more than babies, you have to take care of their every need and you have to see the emotional state that they are in and to support them. And if Rajeshwari has been doing it for the last eight years, imagine. And that is where we need to, all of us, anticipate what could be the issues, how we are going to be dealing with it, right? Navina says we manifest our deepest fears. So astrologers thrive on it. Very true. Nothing against them though. But we can turn the prediction to our benefit by working on it and transform to our benefit. I've always been very impressed by the slogan which long back a wise man had said. Ke, it's in Urdu. Khudi ko kar buland itna. Khudi ko kar buland itna. कि हर तकदीर से पहले खुदा खुद बंदे से पूछे बता तेरी रजा क्या है loosely translated it says lift yourself your persona to such a level khudi ko kar buland itna that god himself should ask you tell me what fate should i write in your destiny and your life God should feel that you can decide your own destiny. What a wonderful proverb which has always impressed me. And believe me, all of us can do it. 
whatever astrologers may say, whatever karma, destiny, everything, we can change it for the better. Okay. Ah, Roshan says, concentrating on our energies within will prove to be successful in every aspect of life. I truly believe in having pure and good intentions in whatever you are doing. Take the example of Tata's. What a great contribution to this society. Always thinking of sharing and giving whatever their earnings are. We are a drop in the ocean and yet such great contribution. Since Roshan mentioned Tata's, I am always very, very motivated by what Jamshaji Tata said that I do not want to gather wealth. I want to create wealth. Think of the depth of that statement. I do not want to gather wealth. I want to create wealth. Oh, I can go on speaking for hours on these type of things, but let's move uh, uh, forward. Okay. Yashoda says, Hi Ali, happy morning and happy new year to all. DCS has brought a lot of change in my life as well. Ali says, has transformed B from a worm to in a cocoon to a butterfly and doing service to mankind. Thank you, Ali, for that. I would like to thank you, Yashoda, for that because you have done it by yourself. Yes, we can be conduits. We can be the means by which we can do a little bit. But actually, it is you who have to carve out your path. And that is what, as I said, you have to literally create your own destiny, create your own karma. And it can be done. Shika says, Ali, my takeaway from today's talk and since few years is to be financially independent. And future planning is very important for us. I agree, especially women. Yes, I always keep telling women, ensure that you have that financial stability in your younger age or even later age. Build up skills where you know that you don't have to uh, you know, rely on somebody. Even if today you are a full-time homemaker or you're taking care of children or whatever it is, if the need arises, you should be able to say that I have the capability of looking after my own financial needs. I will not have to go with a begging bowl. That thought itself makes you feel so positive, you know. Life and its many ways, says Shika, can take us anywhere and we must be prepared. When we know we can feed our body to be fit physically and then our mental health is supremely aligned and we can feel empowered. Purpose of life to work towards always having a pleasant, smiling decorum. Even through your tears, you should learn to smile. Even when you are crying, there should be a smile on your face to say that, yes, I am sad, I am crying today, but I am looking forward, I am optimistic that something good will come in my life. Vinita says, Ali, I feel many things are interconnected deep inside us. <clears throat> For example, like having a bad relationship with someone or stress in work or any other issues does impact us eventually and need to address it at the right time, which helps even if we see it in children. Yes, Vinita, that was the reason just before the break, I showed you those six different areas of our life which we need to balance. I made that into a wheel, you know. If you make those five, six prongs of the wheel and mark yourself on those six points, how well you are doing. If the wheel is roundish, you know that your journey will move smoothly. If the wheel is up and down and less and more, you know that your life chariot will be jumping up and down. That is what I mean by life balance and that is what all of us need to look into without getting overwhelmed either, you know, saying my life is over. I only want to take care of my children. I only want to ensure this, this, this. Yes, do it. But it cannot become an obsession. It cannot be your only purpose in life. Keep that in mind. Florence, our good old friend Florence says, Happy New Year to Dr. Ali and wonderful team. Two sides of the same coin, trust in God and do your best trustfully. In fact, I mentioned this earlier also. In my childhood, my grandfather told me an Arabic proverb which says, trust in God 
but tie up your camel first. Even God helps those who help themselves. Okay. Banjara Academy, a source of energy and enthusiasm. Thank you, dear Ali. Thank you, Florence. It's always a pleasure to receive a positive affirmation from you. Vinita says, and of course, the best life-changing course is DCS, dear friend. Please note, we are not paying them to make all these comments. Sometimes, in fact, I start feeling a little embarrassed when so many positive comments come about DCS, about Banjara, or about me personally. It's just that we are doing our humble mission. It is not our intention to be those great people who transform and they say that. We only act as conduits, as I always say. And if people like these give us these compliments, it really enhances our motivation, our inspiration, and our desire to continue with our humble mission. Ah, Florence says the principle of spend, share, and save is the mantra. Yes, that is what some of us seem to have missed out on. We become overconfident with our earnings and we keep increasing our lifestyle. Sometime I will be talking about what is a very interesting word called minimalism. Can we minimize our lives to have only whatever our need is? Like Mahatma Gandhi had said, India is not a poor nation. There is enough for everybody's need, but not enough for everybody's greed. And that is what we have to differentiate. Even differentiating between needs and wants is a very important factor which we need to take into account. Navina says, I think it's so rightly said that we are the makers of our own destiny. Absolutely, I believe in that. Because as we shift our focus and focus on what we want, we would be flowing energy there and hence creating our destiny of our choice. That's what they say in another form which they say, you know, that you set a goal and you work towards it and the universe conspires to help you. I don't know much about the universe. I'm not into astronomy and this and that. But I do know that your own positive energies make you so you know, positive, so motivated that you start doing better in life. Ha! Kumar says, Hi Ali, taking a cue from your talk, there will be a lot of emphasis on women development. We can expect a lot of opportunities for women to be self-reliant, job opportunities, self-employment, taking front stage in various areas from home to society on the large and elections coming. Sometimes we see a lot of women taking leads as well. Looking at the layoffs, the stress might lay on the women to get into supporting roles as well. It's your opinion, Kumar, but that's my opinion too. I agree with you. Women have opportunities today which they have never had. 2023 can be a turning point in the lives of so many young and old women. Old women who are still young at heart, remember that. If they start saying, I am already X years old or Y years old, it's too late for me. I can't bring about a change. I can't do much. You're defeating yourself. For this year, make a resolution saying that age is only a number. And now that another fresh year has started and opportunities are constantly improving. Constantly, I am getting more and more opportunities, particularly as a women. Men are also. But women, there has been a significant change. Even the military has now started taking in women at the NCO level. Six years back, I was privileged to be in the Air Force Training College when they inducted the first three women as fighter pilots. I mean, these are just one or two examples I'm giving you to show what opportunities there are for women. And you know what's the greatest enemy of women even today? Low self-esteem. You battle that, you build up your self-esteem and your self-worth and say, I am capable, I shall do, I will not compete with others. Even women who you know, use slogans like women are as good as men, they have half defeated themselves. Why do you need to be as good as men? You be good, 
you be better, you be best, but don't compare. Comparison is something that can always bring you down. Please keep in mind. If at all you have to compare, compare with yourself. Right? So we have Irsha. Always wear a smile because your smile is a reason for many others to smile. I learned this from Manjara. Yes, Irsha, and I know that you have learned a lot of lessons from being a military wife to being a good mother who has brought up your children. So many things you have achieved in life. You may not have got the Ashoka Chakra or Paramvir Chakra for whatever you did. But let me tell you that you have achieved much more than those heroes who have done on the battlefield and places uh, outside. You have done it right at the core. Life begins at home. Life begins with the homemaker. Naveena says, work-life balance is mostly talked for women. But I think even men need to think about it. How men could leave their office work at office and be at home when they are at home. A funnier part of this is that office has already come to home. There are innumerable men who do not go to office. They are sitting at home and their laptop is their uh, office. So, as I said, changes, not anticipated. Five, ten years back, what Navina said made would have been quite impactful that men could leave their office work at office and come and be at home. That's what I always used to tell busy people, that when you go home, please de-stress yourself. If necessary, go to a park and do some jogging or sit somewhere and have a cup of coffee. But when you reach home, put away all your office stress and start. Now, even that privilege is not there. Maybe when you finish your work, shut your laptop and go running out into the park or the road or to a coffee shop or something and then come back home and say, up till now, it was my office. Now it is my home and my family. And I do agree with Navina that it is far more important for men than for women. In fact, if you ask me, my personal experience interacting with people has been that Many, many more women know how to do work-life balance than men. Whatever I showed you in those slides, no? the six different parameters of balancing your uh, life in different areas, I think it is much more serious and much more applicable for men to do it rather than women, because a lot of women are already doing it. But not too many men are doing it. If you can convince or Persuade the men in your life, starting from children, boys, to understand that this is what it should be. Unfortunately, we make the mistake of telling young boys, you have to study hard, you have to get good marks, you have to get into a good college, you have to get into a good job, as though that's all life is all about. By now, I think most of us in this group know that life is much more than a good uh, education and a good job and a good uh, uh, salary, isn't it? Behavioral scientists have been telling us for the last 15, 20 years that emotional intelligence constitutes 70, 80 percent of your well-being and happiness. IQ and buddhi and cognitive intelligence is 10, 20, 25 percent at the most. Ha. Ah. Yes, Subramaniam Ram Swami says hi and hi to you also. It is nice to have you in our program and it's nice to have all of you. I always enjoy the way it may not be a group as they say, you know, that so-and-so's program has gone viral and there are so many thousands or so many millions. I'm not looking at it. In fact, I think if our group grow, grows sometime into thousands and millions, I'm going to be an unhappy person. I enjoy with the few you know, people who are there, some who are regular and who are with us every Saturday, some who drop in unexpectedly and give me the pleasure and I see their name and I feel happy that I'm reconnecting back with them after a long uh, uh, gap. These are the things which I find is the human touch which I always keep emphasizing upon. What do you need in life? You need one, two, three people in your core group, in your intimate circle, and life can be a pleasure. Hmm. Namina says, I, 
came across a person who said that while he drives home, he stops at a place and sorts himself out and comes at a place where he is sorted and leaves his office. And after that, he continues his drive home. I was really impressed and appreciated this act of his. I think it's much required for every working person, be it a man or woman, be it work from home or going to a physical office. As I mentioned just now, even if you work from home, when you switch off your laptop, don't turn around and start interacting there and then with your family members because you will be carrying that stress or that impatience, whatever you had gathered during the last few hours. So de-stress yourself. Minimum, I would say, is go out into a balcony or whatever it is and look out at the sky and have a hot cup of tea or coffee or whatever is your beverage. Take some deep breaths and come back. Better than that would be if you can spend some time in nature. There is nothing like nature to teach us about the realities of life, about work-life balance, about what to expect. Nature tells us that seasons change whether you like it or not. You may be thoroughly enjoying the winter which we are having now, but before you know it, the winter will recede. The summer will come in. By the time you are getting adapted to summer and saying, yeah, I'm enjoying summer, the rains will start. The same thing happens in our day-to-day -day and real life. Seasons in our lifestyle keep changing from time to time. Yes. Rajeshwari says, thank you, Ali, for such a motivational talk. You're a wonderful inspiration. Thank you, Rajeshwari. And you people are my inspiration. Don't forget that. When I see these responses, that's what is my inspiration. So maybe if I'm inspiring you, I'm just holding a mirror to you. That's all, right? Okay, Shubha says, Hi Ali, I'm one such person who connects to these Saturdays talks by chance. But surprisingly, I always listen to a topic that is most needed at that point of time for me. It happens. That's part of what we say, know that the universe conspires. It does happen that suddenly you feel something and you feel, hey, this is meant exactly for me. This is what I was looking for. I wasn't even aware that I was looking for it. But when this topic was announced or when this discussion took place, I felt that I can connect it to the best of our uh, thing. Yeah, Navina has a very nice point. I feel our body is the best judge of what we are going through. Mind and body are connected to each other. The mind influences the body and the body influences the mind. Like I told about work-life balance, that is financial and health and professional and educational and purpose and recreation. The same way, please remember, please make a resolution for this year that you will ensure that your mind and your body become best friends. One should support the other. When the body is tired, when the body is sick, the mind should take over and keep it going. When the mind is feeling low, depressed, confused, the body should take over and say, hey, here I am. I'll run you through this difficult phase of uh, yours. Yes, Sri Devi, you rightly said, we should listen to our body. No, I keep on emphasizing on this that we should listen to our body our body tells us so much i remember very clearly i was forced by my physician to go and meet a cardiologist wonderful gentleman he took all the whatever you know ecg this that tested me for everything and in the end he said bring about a little change in your lifestyle do brisk walking and all those things he said but when I asked him, doctor, when do you want me to see you? You know, he said, your body will tell you. When you feel the need, you come back to me. So as we come to the end of the program, let me put up the last one that is Navina's uh, comment. Though mindfulness, through mindfulness, we can overcome many of our blocks. Mindfulness is a wonderful habit for all of you. If you want, we'll have a, another a session on it sometime or you can read it up, Google it up, etc. But mindfulness can overcome many of our blocks 
And if we are unable to manage ourselves, it's best to seek help, counselor, therapist, whoever it is. Keep that in mind. Sonal already told you that we offer free counseling and we are not the only one. There are innumerable other excellent counselors and therapists all over Bangalore, all over the country. Take advantage of it and continue to make your life better. And with that, I will sign off with Anis telling you the next topic is a little twisted one. It's going to be interesting why adults tell lives on 14th January, 11 o'clock Saturday. See you all. Bye-bye.